Walpole Film Festival started in 2003 as one of the first high school film festivals in the country. The program has been recognized nationally as a model for creativity and collaboration in the classroom. Students in the program are required to follow each step in modern independent digital filmmaking. This includes screenwriting, acting, art direction, shooting on digital cameras, editing on professional software, and composing original music. The festival culminates each year with a red carpet ceremony that celebrates the achievements of each crew. To learn more about this year's Walpole Film Festival and how to become a sponsor, please visit our website, walpolefilmfestival.com. Thank you and enjoy the movie. Hey, nigger, how does that make you feel? Why must we tell this story? Now, if a white person walks up to Easy E and says, hey, nigger. Depends on how he said it. Like, you say, what's up, nigger? Then that's cool. But if you just say, nigger, then I'm going to take it different. And I might be over there, you, get, you be pulling me off of it, you know? As a teacher, you might not hear this word every day. As a student, you do. The word is being said here in Walpole schools. The word was spoken towards me. In a negative way, it was spoken towards you? It was a negative way. And I felt like I was being degraded because I was a person, because I'm a person of color and that they have a word to call me. I just don't feel good about it. It has always been associated with hate. It has been used as a way to disparage a whole group of people. The history of the word goes back many years. It is a word that connotes black. I mean, it stems from the Latin word Niger, which is a Latin form of black. Um, it also comes from the Portuguese and Spanish negro, which means black. And it stems from that. It's a descriptive phrase. It's an adjective that uh, rather that uh, tells somebody something about somebody's color. Um, but has obviously evolved from there into you know, m more nuanced and more pejorative um, sense. And today, in today's world, it can be a very, very hurtful word if not used appropriately. So you have to be careful about when and how you use the word, if at all. Um, well, the word originated from the harsher N-word, which was used back in slave times. And, um, it gradually turned into another word that's used for slang, but it's not acceptable for me to use it. Segregation of the races became a way of life in our country. Bathrooms, movie theaters, even water fountains were designated for whites and colored people. The word became a wedge between us, even in the media. Subtle and not so subtle forms of racism have always been apparent. Mommy, I walk a million miles. Of one of your smiles. <laughs> Did you ever see an elephant fly? <laughs> well, I seen a horse fly. Thanks to people like Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, and others who started the civil rights movement, more people soon realized that the use of the word was wrong. Then a resurgence in the use of the word occurred, mainly in songs created by rap artists like N.W.A. and artists today like Future, Drake and Nicki Minaj. There are even white rappers like Logic and Eminem that use the word in songs. This has led to an increase in the younger generation using the word. That's the way it goes in the city of Compton. This word and how it is said has now split into two different categories. People still see it as a hate word and try to censor it from society. But it has also come to be a greeting among young African Americans. Now would you use the N word in a conversation talking to your friends? Yes, because I think it's normal. Uh, casual conversation, no. Because it's like, I don't really swear often. So like, I wouldn't, it wouldn't come up to think of it. In a song, maybe because like, I'm into the song and it's like, you know, it's just a, I've memorized the lyrics so I don't even realize I'm saying it, but yeah. It is a powerful word used by some to identify them as part of a group. But is that a good thing? Can young African Americans really take the word back? The way that I try to explain it to my kids is that I feel, and it's, it's apples and oranges because it's, the N-word is so much worse um, in terms of its history. 
But when I think about, about white girls calling each other bitches, I, it's, it's a derogatory term okay. that, that they use as, as a term of affection for one another. Because it's a word that, like, that men have used to put women down. So why would I take a term that you use to, as a derogatory term and now make that a term of endearment for somebody that I love? You know, so like that's so like I understand reclaiming it, um, and it's 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 represent you know it represents a struggle that that we've been through and, and part of our history, and we're taking it back and we're reclaiming it. It's like I understand it, but I wish, you know, I, I wish that you could find another way to to express yeah. how you feel about one another. I mean, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but it almost seems like there's this culture of kind of taking the word and making it your own. Mm -hmm. um, not as like a direct revolution, but kind of like a like a response to how it was used before, and I feel like I feel like it's kind of symbolic that it's that it's theirs now. Some choose not to say it because they know the backstory, but others do say it without thought to the historical implications. You can't use a word that you don't know the meaning of. You can't say it, it or you can't like like you're if you're looking at like the nutrition facts on like a box of food and you see something that you don't know what it is would you eat it i mean if you don't know what it is or where it comes from you probably wouldn't use it some young people think it's their privilege to say it but many think using it shows disregard to the racism and all the history behind it mark Marin a comedian who runs his own podcast, WTF. When he had an interview with President Barack Obama, he explains the bigger picture of racism in America and had used the N-word publicly. What is also true is that the legacy of slavery, Jim Crow, discrimination in almost every institution of our lives, you know, that casts a long shadow. And that's still part of our DNA that's, that's passed on. Uh, it, we're not cured of it. Racism. Racism. We are not cured of. Clearly. Uh, and, and, and it's not just a matter of uh, it not being polite to say nigger in public. That's not the measure of whether racism still exists or not. So the question is, can people stop the word from being used? Do they have the power to change people's attitudes? The more I think about it and talk to people, it's unlikely that anyone will be able to stop the use of the word. The word, in both of its connotations, is being used all across the country every day. It has brought shame and humiliation to an entire race of people. What can we do? Start the conversation, not just among our peers, but in school as well. Teachers in high, in the, in this high school, I don't know anybody who either teaches that word or talks about it in any um, specific or or organized fashion, and that would you know that would that's a that's a hard thing to do, it really is. I'm learning. Um, I'm learning all the time. I'm reading books and I'm having conversations and I'm listening to black authors and um, I've learned more about the implications of the n-word in the past year than I knew in my entire life. So there have been times as a teacher that I didn't say something to students um, when they said it because I didn't know how to approach that conversation and I feel like I have more skills now um, to have harder conversations. So I would like to think that now if I heard it I would be able to appropriately address it as a learning opportunity because I had to learn somehow, and so students also have to learn. I think they're talking about it more because just because we brought it up more, but if we didn't talk about it and like didn't have a club or anything, nobody would talk about it. Gotcha. In terms of club, like what club do you like um, talk about this with? If you soar, so it's like students organized against racism. All right. Do you guys talk about the use of the N word in, in that group or? Yeah, we talk about like the use, how to prevent it, and then how to like inform teachers about it. We talked about um, a list that has ways to, if the word is said in class, ways to respond to the word instead of just ignoring it or acting like they didn't say it. Did you get any um, 
information back on teachers, you know, responding to, you know, being received that? A lot of kids, I know that a teacher sent it out to other ones and people have been adding more ways to like prevent it and have a conversation about it. I don't think it's enough talk only because I remember like um, some students had reported like the n-word being used negatively against them mm -hmm. and um, a response like from I don't know who it was from exactly but from like some teacher or maybe the principal was um they can't punish the student who said it because it would be like punishing every other student for swearing. There is talk about it. I don't think there's I don't think there's a there's no script necessarily. Not that a script would be, would work all the time anyway. Yeah. But I I think more. I think more support would help with how best to address it, how best to respond to it. Um, yeah, I think it's, if the, t the talk that's happening isn't, isn't um, coming up with a plan on how to, how to respond to it, so we could use that. I mean, if I ever hear something like that, or if I, if I hear anything, see anything happening, I like to jump right in and have a discussion about it immediately. I think when, when we have bigger discussions, it's because I'm, I hear that it's happening more than it should, and so therefore sometimes we need to say, okay, what else can we do to educate, whether that be public service announcements on the, on the TV in the morning or um, bringing speakers in who can discuss um, some of the behaviors that we're, we might be seeing are um, very often clubs. I mean, the Soar Club was was one that really, you know, grew from, you know, grassroots of, of you know, sort of what what are the issues and how can we handle them? You know, let's get together and discuss them. When I first started this project, my views on the N word were different. I thought it was never okay to use the word, but after talking to black people, white people students and even teachers. I think in certain circumstances it's okay to use the word without the stigma attached to it. I see the word is changing and its context less demeaning in my community. In time I hope the hate will disappear. There's a brilliant quote by Nelson Mandela that explains the power we have to change and it's suitable to end this film. The South African revolutionary once explained Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Let's learn to change the world and the word.